Good morning. It's lovely to see all of you here this morning. Uh, do just sit down for a moment. Am I near enough? Am I talking loud enough? Can you all hear me? Excellent. No? Yes? Yes? Yes. Good. Okay. And hopefully you can all hear us on uh, line as well. So, uh, shall I just wiggle it around so you can all wave and say hello? Okay, here we go. Taking very careful not to um, knock any of the cables out or anything. A worrying Sean here. So, here we go. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, on Facebook as well as here in church. And let me just pull this down. Okay. So, uh, good. So welcome uh, to worship on this Sunday. And uh, just before we start our worship, um, next week, and this is important particularly for people on Facebook, but also for you here in church, it's our annual meeting here at St. Mary's. So, um, two things with that. Oh, Norma says good morning to everyone, and the sound is fab. There we go. So, um, thank you, Norma. Uh, so we have our annual reports available. They are here, hard copies here in church. Please do take one. I have also sent some out by email as well, but uh, there are plenty of copies in paper here in church for people to pick up. And so next week, the annual meeting will be about half past 10 after the earlier service. And then... Um, we will follow with this service will take place at the end of that service. So I'm not quite sure of the time of this service next week. I think it'll be something like half past 11, but it depends how long the annual meeting lasts and we didn't just need to make the, the church ready. So um, if people want to join in the annual meeting through a Zoom link, I'm very happy to set that up. Um, I just need people's email addresses for that. And uh, so you can let me know about that. And we'll have a little pause between the end of the meeting and the service in case somebody wants to join us on Zoom and then walk down to the service. So um, let me know if you would like a, a Zoom link setting up. But I hope that you'll all be, join in with our annual meeting because it's really important to, to do that. And, of course, that's when we're going to be electing people in church. So we still have um, some vacancies, uh, nomination form spaces for our, our parochial church council. So if anybody would like to be on that or interested in being on that or could think of somebody else that they think should be on it, get them signed up on the list at the back of church. The other thing to say, while I pick up my papers, is that we are looking at starting up coffee on Saturdays in church. And we're looking at starting on the 5th of June. That will be in the main hall, so there is plenty of space to space out. We will keep an eye on how that all goes, because uh, we, we don't want to, obviously, uh, have any problems with people we need still to obey the restrictions with that. But it will be lovely to have the chance. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. So uh, we do need some volunteers to make that happen. So if you can volunteer, please do let us know. We're looking at having the coffee on the first and third Saturdays, 10 till 12, um, starting at the beginning of June. Everything else? On the notice sheet, do ask. So welcome to our worship here this morning at St. Mary's. We're in the in-between time, which I shall talk a little bit more about later, between the Festival of Advent, sorry, Advent, Ascension, which we celebrated last Thursday, when Jesus returned to heaven, and Pentecost, which is next Sunday, which is when the Spirit is given to the church, and that leads to the beginnings of the church. So we're in that between time, and that's reflected in our readings here this morning. Let's stand to begin our worship.
grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We turn to our prayers of confession. Christ has ascended to the heavens on high. As we prepare ourselves to meet him there, let us call to mind our many failures and sins. A moment of quiet. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for this Sunday after Ascension Day. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, Fill your church on earth with power and compassion that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. Amen. Please sit for our first reading. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in this ministry. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for our gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed, Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. 
all mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one while I was with them I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. Please sit down. It's a lovely passage which, where Jesus speaks to his disciples this, with this prayer that they hear him saying to God the Father. And it's the Maundy Thursday, so the night before he is killed. And he is just full of love for them because he knows the difficulties they're going to face. And he prays that they will be helped through that time and kept strong and kept going for afterwards as well. Now, I'm quite sure that some of you will feel the same as I do and feel that you are not very good at waiting. Are you good at waiting? Mm. Most of us struggle with it at times. I'm not talking about the sort of waiting which is anticipating something good or something that you know about that's going to happen. So, like when you're waiting for Christmas or a holiday or something like that. Um, it's more about sort of waiting when you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know what it will be like. That sort of waiting is quite hard, I think. And I'm quite sure that I would have talked about the times of waiting before, and particularly the waiting times in our church seasons. Because this is one of them. This is in a waiting time. The time between Ascension Day last Thursday and Pentecost next Sunday. At Ascension, Jesus leaves the disciples to return to heaven and he tells them to wait. Wait in Jerusalem for the arrival of the promised Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who will empower them to live out all that they've heard, all that they've seen, all that they've learned from Jesus and to fulfill that mission to go out into all the world and make disciples of all people. So imagine those disciples in these 10 days waiting in Jerusalem for the Spirit. We have an advantage over them because we can read what happens in the Bible. So we know that the Spirit will come and they will be transformed and empowered and just, just go out and spread the gospel. They don't know that because in story it hasn't happened yet so they just know that Jesus has left Jesus who has been their companion who has power over death and been resurrected after the awful events of Holy Week and has been with them during the last few weeks the 40 days 
and now he has gone from their sight. And the world around them must feel very scary and hostile. This was the world that crucified Jesus. There is reason to be scared. They do, as Jesus tells them. They wait in Jerusalem. They spend time together. No doubt they are reassuring each other about what's happened and talking about Jesus and all that he said and all that they experienced with him. Next Sunday, we shall celebrate Pentecost and the Spirit arriving on them. But right now, they are in the waiting time, as we are, and we have been for so long. And it feels that we're quite a pivotal moment in this pandemic at the moment because we are just about to open up more. Tomorrow there will be more opening up, but, but we thought that in June there was hope that all the restrictions, or a lot of them, might be lifted and life might have a bit more of how we remembered it from before. But we're not sure it's going to happen now. I don't know if any of you watched Line of Duty, um, that programme that was on, yeah, quite a few people in church, a few people in here, chip, not in here. There's the wonderful phrase when um, uh, the inspector, whatever he is, and um, you really need the right accent for this, and I haven't got it, but anyway, you go. And um, he's frustrated at the rate of progress, and he says, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and the wee donkey, can we just move this thing along before it drives us all around the bend? <laughs> it sounds better in his accent, but there we go. We can all appreciate that. We just want to move on. We want things to be opened up. But we know we have to be cautious. We know things could still be scary. And we know things are scary in India with the variant of the virus over there. And we've watched with great sadness and sympathy and love with all that's happening in India and been aware of the contacts with India through our own uh, church congregation and roundabout. And we know that that variant is here in this country and so we are waiting to see what's going to happen. Hopefully, the vaccine will stop it affecting people so greatly here. Hopefully, our National Health Service will be able to cope and not be overwhelmed. But we don't know yet, so we have to wait and see. And that sort of waiting is not easy. So what can we do while we wait? Well, we can do what we've been doing all through this and what we've done on other occasions. We pray and we worship together when and how we can and at home. And it is just as valid to pray at home as it is to pray in church. God doesn't have um, you know, better hearing aids in church or anything. His ears work wherever he is. So wherever you are, it is okay to pray to God there. We can keep in contact with each other and keep supporting each other in all sorts of ways, as people have been doing, and as I hope that we will continue to do, and not just when we're in a time of pandemic, any time. But we can also prepare ourselves for emerging out of this, because we will, we will emerge out of this. So, I want you just to think for a moment, for yourself, are there things that you've not been doing that you would like to get back to doing? And do you need help with that? Or what about someone you know? Do they need help with starting to do things again? For instance, some people are finding that because they haven't been so active, they've lost some of their mobility and fitness. Is that you or someone you know? How could we help each other with that? If you've not been inside someone else's house for a year, 
or not had anybody in your house for a year, it's going to be quite a step to make that step into or allow someone else in. I know the first time that we had somebody in our house, it was somebody to do some work in the house um, uh, last summer, and even after just a few months, it felt really, really strange. So if that's not happened for a year, that's going to be really, really hard, a big step. How can we help each other with steps like that? What about going on a bus or to the shops or to a cafe or a pub? All things that we would have done normally and for most people not with too much stress. But it's a different time now, isn't it? And we've got to learn to do all these things again. And some people are going to find them particularly scary. That might be you, or it might be someone you know. So could you talk to each other? Could you ask for help if you want it? Could you help somebody else ask them if they want it? In our church, we're restarting Saturday morning coffee. There might be people who'd like to come, but are apprehensive. If that's you, talk to someone and find a way, we can find a way of helping you make that step. Or ask somebody else if you think they might be finding it scary. Don't be afraid to ask either way. I am sure that we will emerge. It may take longer than we'd like to, but we will get there. And when we do that, I'd like all of us to be there and to have more people with us too. So let's ask our faithful God to send his Holy Spirit to help us emerge out of COVID, but also to give us the courage, the passion and the love to invite others to come to know the love of God for them. Amen. We turn now to our prayers of intercession. Our response is, Lord, when I say, Lord, hear us, please respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, Pray for the church, your broken body in the world. We pray for each other. We pray for churches which haven't opened up yet and those which are just beginning to. We pray for our congregation here at St Mary's, those able to be with us in person, those joining us through Facebook or YouTube. We pray for our annual meeting next week. We pray for your guidance, Lord, to take us into the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Especially today, we think of the fighting and violence in Israel and Palestine. That part of the world, Lord Jesus, where you lived and walked amongst your people, and which has been subject to conflict for so, so many centuries. We pray that ways may be found through to peace and justice for all the peoples of that land. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. We pray for especially for our brothers and sisters in India, for those suffering because of the virus and for the fear and distress. We pray for the work of Christian aid amongst the poorest nations and peoples of the world. And we pray for a world where everybody can live without poverty and need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels those who have died, trusting your promises. We pray for those we know who have died recently and whose funerals are taking place around this time. For Auntie Adrian, whose funeral took place last week. For Doreen Mullins, whose funeral takes place this coming week. And for Matthew's father, as we wait to hear when his funeral will be. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe. Pray for us, who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord Jesus, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand if you're able to share the peace. And just before we do that, uh, just to let you know of some of the, we have a good number of people with us, uh, including one of our Muslim friends, Shaz, uh, who invites us all to play for people suffering in Palestine, Christians and Muslims, and around the world. And Angela reminds us that just saying a good morning or a good afternoon when passing people lifts and brightens someone's day. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Good Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the heart. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to feed for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts, and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.